It's Alex's final day in West London, helping Potley, an Indian restaurant in dire need of a new head chef. Old college friends Jay Gosh and Uttam Tripathi have spent the past four years working tirelessly to realize their dream of owning a successful Indian restaurant. Service! It was a dream of me and my business partner to serve the flavors of Indian marketplace food here in the streets of London. And so far, we are blowing the taste buzz off of all our customers day in and day out. That's, that's what we want. Now, they hope to grow the business, but only if Jay can step out of the kitchen. We need a head chef to come in and replace me, where he's running the show on a day-to-day -day basis, and we are then expanding the business and growing forward. But hiring the perfect chef is easier said than done. There is a dearth of good head chefs in the market. The talent pool is shrinking. We are not getting in skilled uh, chefs from India. Now, time is of the essence if they are to build on their success. Every month that we do not get the head chef, it is delaying our new projects. To find the right head chef at this juncture is absolutely crucial. With the help of Alex, they hope their six-month search is over. I'm sure we'll find the right head chef to help us to spread a bit of spice in everyone's life. Nine candidates have been interviewed for the head chef position. I've never done this before. During a fiery few days of cooking, seven got the chop. Chapati is a disaster. The rice is absolutely, I can't eat it. But two did make the grade and have been shortlisted for the final interview. Arbinda Dugar. Arbinda, you are. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Mark Robinson. Wow, brilliant. <laughs> Congratulations, Mark. But with no chefs on day one being picked for the job. And the decision is, no one goes through the next round. There is still one place up for grabs. Jay and Uttam have decided to give one of the chefs another chance. Chef Kuldiv, it's Jay from Portly. We have decided to give you a second chance for our second round. Okay. Kuldeep Singh has been thrown a lifeline. I want to win. This is my main goal. Only the best will win the position and be the restaurant's new head chef. This is a big day for Potley. This could be the start of the next stage of Jay and Utam's journey. But the successful candidate must really step up to the mark. What I am specifically looking in the head chef today is basically four things. One is that sort of chefing pride. Yes. One is that sort of chefing passion. Yes. One is that sort of personality, which would sort of exude today when they cook. And also I want that sort of bit of a panache. So that would differentiate them. I'm yeah. looking for someone who's, who's going to be able to lead the team in the right direction, motivate them, who's going to be able to coordinate with the front of the house yes. fantastically well. As if working as a team is not my kitchen, it is our kitchen. That is a word I, I want him to talk about. First of the three finalists to arrive is Arbinda Dugal. In his first interview, his food did all the talking. The passion that I saw in Arvinda's plate was more than anyone else. That was a dish I could easily finish it myself. Right. Thank you right? so much. Thank you. But with high expectations, there were worries over his inexperience. Why couldn't you add up your different elements of the cost and give us a final costing? What was wrong with that? From a sous chef, when you go to a head chef, the buck stops with you. <laughs> Obinda was probably the standout chef in terms of cooking. I, I personally feel that he's one of the strongest candidates we have got. With Arbinda, I think he's young, he's ambitious. The only sort of caveat is he's never been a head chef. So to manage a restaurant which is really busy, uh, to hit the ground running from day one, would he, is he the right candidate? That's, that's something we have to really see. Second candidate is Mark Robinson. Hi. Hi, Al. Right. Yeah, I'm good. good. I'm Mark. Mark Arbinda, yeah. Arbinda. Yeah. Nice to meet you, Arbinda. He's the most experienced of the three chefs and the most determined. I'm ambitious and I do want to succeed more and more these days. I mean, at the end of the first heat, you probably see on my face, I was pretty exhausted. 
His enthusiasm in his interview excited Jay and Uttam. I, I think he's asked more questions than we asked him. You are the only chef, and the only chef in quite a long time that I've met, who knows how to do a proper costing. But he lacked one vital ingredient. He has very little experience mm -hmm. in the Indian cooking. He was bashing up his uh, green <laughs> cardamom pods, and he was, was yeah, yeah, I was quite, quite amazed. Obviously, the enormous question mark is however enthusiastic he is with Indian cooking, he doesn't really have the knowledge. That's right. I mean, with Mark, one thing really is admiring about him is his great attitude. You know, he, yes. he, he, he doesn't want to be in his comfort zone, which is very important for us. As much as I want to discount him not being an Indian yes. chef, I can't ignore him. He's been absolutely flawless. Final candidate is Kuldeep Singh. Good nice morning. surprise there. Avinder. 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 How is Kuldeep? Kuldeep. Yes. I'm Mark. Mark, nice meeting you. Thank you, sir. Nice Thank you. you. We all felt that he was a very sturdy pair of hands. If Kuldeep, Kuldeep grabs it with both his hands, and yes. I think it would be really great. I have no doubt about his cooking abilities. But having been initially caught out on costs... Kuldeep, when, when you're applying for a head chef position, you should have done your costing. Can he now convince he's ready to step up to head chef? It's new challenge, and I want to perform like what I can do. So we can meet the chefs? Meet the best chef then. Thanks. Good. Thank you. This final interview is the last chance for the candidates to prove they should be the new head chef. If they can't hack it today, they won't get the job. Good morning. Hello, chefs. So, you all did very well in the first round of interviews. Uh, we're starting with a blank slate today. Today, you guys are cooking for a group of loyal, hardcore customers. They are one of our biggest critics, and I want you guys to deliver. To test their head chef skills, Arbinder, Mark, and Kuldeep have been asked to pre-plan a three-course set menu. First, they will prepare their starter, and this will be no time for mistakes. We've decided that only two chefs are going to cook their full menu, because we're, you're going to cook with the team and with the front of house, and we don't want it to be too confusing. So what we're going to do is give you 45 minutes to cook your starters, and then we're going to taste them all. Mm -hmm. In the meantime, we're going to go through your menus, and we'll go from there. Is that OK? Can I have your menus and your costings, oh, yeah, please? Sure. Thanks, Abhinder. Literally, today, the destiny is in your own hands. And I just want you guys to sort of, you know, perform today without any inhibitions. Mm -hmm. All the best, chefs. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Their menus should justify a set price of £25 and take into consideration the restaurant's ethos of authentic Indian market cuisine. I'm very confident. I will cook my three course. It's my target. So I try my best. I'd love to get a chance to cook my main course this afternoon and the, and the dessert, because we put a lot of effort into, into, into getting it all ready. I'm just going with the, with the starters and we'll see what, uh, you know, what's going to happen. It's going to be a tricky, but uh, I think I'll just go with the flow, yeah, so. As a guide, the combined ingredients for the starter dish should total no more than £1.50. Anything higher would compromise the remaining courses. Well, I don't know what I'm up against. I've got two quite, well, obviously very talented uh, gentlemen either side of me. You are the more uh, experienced one there. So... Am I? Yeah. Maybe that's just because of my age. Arbinda Dugal is currently working in London's Mayfair. It's been uh, 10 years I've been a chef. The journey from 2004 till now, it's, it's, there's a lot of difference. He hopes to make a virtue of his varied background cooking in hotels and fine dining restaurants, and sees this as his chance to step up to the plate. I'm currently the sous chef, and that's the highest position that I've had so far. I think I'm very calm in the kitchen, very calm, composed. Once you start getting cooking, you just forget about everything. You just focus on what you have to do. So I'm just gonna grab like a, like a half a kilo of mu uh, button mushroom. You know, my wife, uh, she's very much supportive. 
he he takes it very seriously when we go to spices and the cooking he takes it very seriously i'm really proud of him because he he worship his profession as his god so the food is next to excellence i would, I would say the feedback that i uh, get from my senior chefs uh, which i've worked so far in this industry is that i'm a very hard working uh, good team player and uh, work very well under pressure so i think that's the best compliment that you can get for a chef it is fab beyond words because that's my husband <laughs> <laughs> for his starter arbinda is preparing a northern indian kebab called a mushroom ki gilawat it's traditionally made with meat but by using mushroom arbinda's costs are kept low at 1.59 Oh, Binda. Hiya. Very nice to see you. Hiya. So what have you got? You've got the mushroom. So I've got the mushroom. So I'm making uh, another classic saffron bread here. And served with any and salad? I'm, I'm, I'm making a, a very simple cucumber salad. Okay. So it's like uh, made with cucumbers, tomatoes, green chilies, onions, lemon juice. So Arbinda, do you think uh, today it's your day and you will make it to the finals? I don't want to make me overconfident of anything. You want actions to speak louder than words. Yeah. Good. I like Great. that. Thank you. A mushroom ki gilawat is a traditional Lakhloe kebab, where which literally means melt in the mouth. It's typically done with meat. With Arbinder, I think uh, he has got the wrong selection of mushroom. I would have loved to see uh, things like chestnut or portobello, where there is more meaty flavor in it. Because with this uh, button mushroom, he has got you know with that high level of moisture content, it might not lend to the sort of the meaty. Vegetarian version of the kebab that he's trying to put in the menu. And Ocham, what do you think about his costings? I, I think he's got the costing absolutely spot on. The main aspect of this is that he understands. He's been given a challenge, a costing has been given to him, and he has been absolutely close to it. For Mark's starter, he is preparing a fish fry using South Coast Sprat served with cassava chili and garlic chips with a spiced yogurt dip. I've learned a few things, you know. I've been on the internet, I've watched videos, I've read books. Sussex-based Mark has 30 years experience as a chef, 10 as head chef. He's looking for the next big challenge in his career. Being back in the sort of foodie metropolis of London amongst that melting pot of chefs and food would help lift this sort of part of my career. I think it would be important. He currently works as head chef in an established country food pub, where he's able to practice his passion for produce and love of foreign food. I love to be outdoors. Um, love, love the foraging, because it gets you out of the kitchen as well. You spend a lot of time in the same four walls in the kitchen, and it's, you just want your days off. You want to get out as much as you can. I get tired of doing just British food. And I've travelled in India. I've always loved it. And I've joked with the, uh, with the boss here, saying that one day I'll turn it into an Indian restaurant. It's a huge country with influences from everywhere. And the cooking varies so, so much in the way they use their spices from one region to the other. Family back here 100%. We've got Emily, she's 16 years old. Sebastian's my youngest, and he's five, and George is 10. They'll give constructive feedback, and they'll say if they don't like it. Everyone does, I find. <laughs> Share, what's your favorite thing to eat? Probably um, the chips. <laughs> <laughs> Aiming his menu at the lunchtime diner, Mark's Sprat starter is as rustic as Indian cuisine gets and it shows, with a cost of just 56 pence to plate. So what made you select Sprat uh, in terms of your starter ra rather than any other well, it, standard? I, I, I know that Indian use similar fish, and I know that you like to use local in ingredients. Yes. You use English yep. lamb, mm -hmm. etc. so I've gone for some local South Coast Sprat. OK. Thank you very much, Sean. But will Mark's lighter bite fulfil expectations? What do you think of that menu? Very traditional uh, sort of uh, English fish. He's trying to put it into sort of an uh, Indian marinade. But for a £25 uh, 
uh, three course menu, I would have liked to see something a bit more uh, ambitious. For me, it's more of a bar snack that I would have rather than as a starter. But you know, it, it will all depend on how we mix it. Because we have to consider, it's good for you as businessmen, but are you going to satisfy all yes, your customers? Yes, that's very clear. I'm feeling very, well, a little bit nervous. But same time, I'm very exciting. Kuldeep believes this head chef position will bring out the best of his fine dining training, having learned his skills from one of Britain's most celebrated Indian chefs, Atul Kocha. So Kuldeep, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, sir. Feeling good? Yes, sir. Wow. It's about three years ago I met Kuldeep for the first time. My cuisine has always been about being out there and using the local produce. And I saw that in Kuldeep from day one. Uh, he learned my ethos pretty quickly working besides me. And to be honest, I am not on his tail anymore. He, he, he's master of his kitchen. I born with the spices. When I see the spicy, my senses start working, creating things. My cooking style is like very classic with modern twist. Well, I feel very honored. Like I know my dish was fantastic. Everybody love it. Kuldeep now sees this interview as a chance to escape the shadows of a celebrity boss. Beautifully done. Well done. Okay, very happy with it. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck. Thank you. Kuldeep is preparing a starter of butter crab with asparagus korma and crab rasam. Kuldeep, are you pleased to be back? Have well, of course, chance. of course. But I know. I did very, very good job. I don't know why this guy is a little jealous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, I'm happy with the, like, Arvind. Like, he's a talented sir. So we can see the com camaraderie working yes. and the competition there. So we want that. You know, that sort of, really you know, the good. passion and the determination to succeed. Yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. So do you think your startup will beat the startup for the other two chefs? Well, I don't want to beat them, but I want to make you guys happy. I like that. Thank, Thank you. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. He's got quite a few components in there. I would have loved to just keep it simple with, you know, butter crab and rasam. Really goes well. With a, but with getting the asparagus korma in there, which is heavy, and with your tangy sort of uh, rasam, it might be a bit too confusing in terms of the flavor profile. So he's made another, another mistake. He's done, a, he's done a huge mistake. By using expensive ingredients, his costs have spiraled. By uh, making his costing to up to 12 pounds initially, you know, once he understood that he has made a mistake, he's, he's changed it and he has brought down his cost by a third. But despite streamlining his starter, it's still the most expensive to produce at four pounds. Jay is concerned about Arbinda's choice of button mushrooms for his starter. But Arbinda is using a method that he hopes will make up for any shortfall in flavor. So I'm burning a charcoal. I uh, just want to give a smoke flavor to the mushroom kebab, yeah? I haven't got any cooking smells coming from you yet, mate. Cool, beef. Looking good. I'm interested to see how yours is going to be dished up. Having been pulled up on presentation in his first interview, Mark hopes to add a certain wow factor this time round. I bought a little carved coconut bowl. It's an antique from 18, circa 1880, so it's, I've gone a bit Bollywood. I think after the comment from the, uh, from the boys about the signature dish I did and it not being colourful enough, I've, uh, I've taken it on board somewhat. Owners Jay and Uttam have a very clear concept. They will be expecting Indian market cuisine that looks and tastes authentic. Are you ready, Arby? Yeah, go, go. Are you pelleting up? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, Salute. go, go, go. I'm good to go. It's cracking, mate. Time is up. Mine has already gone cold. I'm going. A little bit I'm going to put. Come quickly up. Oh. That's it. Set your plates yes, down. Sir. Mm. Well, feast for the eyes as well as the stomach, I believe. Yeah.
For his vegetarian starter, Arbinda has prepared a mushroom key galawad served on a saffron bread. It costs £1.59 to put on the plate, making his calculations near perfect. I've done it what I really feel like doing from my heart. I'm not uh, too much in a poncy food. I don't like too much, you know, playing around on the plate. It might make good business sense, but does it deliver on taste? Well, I don't know anything about the technicalities, but I could eat that whole dish. Delicious. I think uh, the starter in itself has delivered in all respects. And I'm, I was concerned with the mushroom choice, but you have delivered it just right. It, it has that sort of a meaty after, after effect. It has got the smoky aroma, not overpowering your spices. And, and that is a dish which you have got every element of it perfect. Well done. So on to Mark. On to Mark now. Mark's starter is South Coast Sprat fish fry, served with cassava chili and garlic chips accompanied with a spiced yoghurt dip. Mark has targeted his set menu at the cheaper lunchtime diner, so his dish works out at a cost of just 56 pence. It's gone exactly as I wanted it to go, I don't know how it's gone out, so we'll see what happens. I'm confident I've done, I've done what I was going to do. But will his bold departure from the brief pay off? I love your bowl, it's mm. very pretty. By very the Bollywood, way. isn't it? What all have you put in the yogurt, sorry? Put some of the marinade before, some that I didn't put on the fish. Wow. Some of the paste went into the yogurt. Right. And, and I think that's given it a lovely kick. Delicious. Really, really enjoyed that. And the fish and that dip together was, you know. And your spicing was spot on. Cassava chips, again, uh, 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 again, thinking out of the box, nice addition. But whether it is going well with the fish, I'm not very sure. That's my British tilt on it. <laughs> Fish and chips, mate. I'm sorry, I can't help myself. Right. Uh, yeah, okay. No, I, I think, Mark, you have, you have done a fantastic job with this one. Thinking from that angle was, you know, completely, you know, took me by surprise. Uh, well done, Mark. Kuldeep has prepared butter crab with an asparagus korma and chosen a tomato rasam instead of crab to reduce his costs. But at four pounds, it's still the most expensive starter. So will it be worth it? I think I chose the right appetizer for them. I'm not going to go because I know I'm good. The butter crab that you have got. Yeah. How did you make it? Well, I cook with like a salad, onion, and garlic and butter. To me, mm. that buttery flavor is not coming through. Okay. I mean, when you say butter crab in the menu, I would yeah. really like to see that you know that sort of nutty, almost buttered to a smoking point, and yeah. with the crab tossed up, so you get the sort of buttery back yeah. note. Yeah. That's something it's missing. The the rasam is great. Visually, it looks great, Kuldi, but it doesn't look like an Indian dish to me. Presentation-wise, we can always change a bit here and there. I mean, and that's, that's not going to make or break your day today. As far as your cooking ability is concerned, Kuldeep, you have done fantastic. Alex, Jay and Uttam must now decide which chef to let go. We're going to go and discuss and we'll see you in a minute. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Should we go the kitchen? So, what did we think of those dishes? As I said to Arvinda, it hit the spot right on the dot. Any day, I would happily chomp away the entire plate and uh, without even thinking twice. The way he got the regional flavors in, in the three course menu, and yet keeping the cost well in, well in terms of the target price, I think uh, he did a fantastic job. I really like Mark's dish, I have to say. I love the fish. I think it was a great selection of fish. This is something we would serve in a sort of Indian roadside place. But whether it goes as a starter on its own or whether it's a more of a bar snack is something we got to understand. Because at the end of the day, you know, if 
we are selling a, a, a starter which is which is priced at only in a sort of 56p in terms of the cost price. Percentage wise, it might look good, but we can't sell this menu at 25 pounds. If yeah. that was on my 25 pound set menu, okay. I would look at that starter and I would think, gosh, I'm doing pretty well with this. I, I, know? I yes, yeah, it's true. Yeah. You know, Alex, I think the customers would be happily, you know, eat that particular dish as a starter here. I, I don't think for a 25 pound that starter really did justice. So now to Cool Deep, who presents us with, I think, a bit of a problem. I, I think it was too posh a dish. It yes. was too too much of a Western presentation. It wasn't a dish that will go in our restaurant, I think. So do you think you know enough from all of these chefs to make your decision or would you like a few more words with them? I think, uh, yeah, sometimes the pressure gets a bit too much and then you, know, you don't deliver as you expect. So I would love to have a one-to-one -one chat. With the new head chef appointment being such a key part of the restaurant's future, its vital expectations are clear. Starting with Arbinda. How interested are you taking this job, Arbinda? You can be as honest and as open yeah, as you want. Uh, just want to be very honest here. Yeah. I'm getting my mortgage done right now. Yeah. I've seen a house, the offer has already been made, the offer is ex accepted. And uh, I'm just like on a on an edge right now because I don't want to hide anything from you guys because it doesn't make any sense for no. me to hide anyone from anyone. For me, work is very important, but the family will always come first. Okay. We, we of... agree with that, but how does that translate in cold terms? Is that is that about, is it a salary question? Yes. Okay. What, what is uh, what is your expectation? Um, is it more than they are offering here? That's yeah, all I yeah, need to lot, know. A lot. We all understand the realities of life. I'm just interested because the salary here was posted. You so say you knew before you came, more or less, before you came for your no, first thought, round of interview. I didn't expect that situation to get changed so quickly. Yeah. We uh, really appreciate your honesty, so Donna. It's be so much better to yes. know. Yes, really Thank, Thank you. you. Oh, well. Mark's dishes have inspired Hi, darling. But is he a flash in the pan or in it for the long run? The biggest question that we have got is that how far can you take your Indian cooking skills to? As in, how far can you take them to? It's got to depend on support and backup and uh, teaching me the way you want it. Mm. For you to learn will obviously take some time and I would definitely back you up in terms of providing my 100% support. But believe you me, it would be a very, very steep learning curve for you. Of course, I totally understand that, yeah. Are you aware of the number of hours that you have to put in every week? No, is it long hours, is it? it is I've, long I've, hours. I've never cooked before. <laughs> no, but, but uh, to, be, to be very honest, it is, it is in the region of around 60 hours a week. Are you, okay. are you and six days a week, um, are you? Six days a week. Six days a week. Six days a week. That's right. One day off a week. That's right. That's what you expect your chefs to do. That's right. Yeah, I wouldn't be happy with that. No? No, I can't do six days a week. Right. I'm 47. I would burn out. I would last, I would last six months and that'd be it. If you have to work for five days a week, are you willing to work for long hours those five days? I mean, I already yeah. do up to 14 hour days and sometimes more. Totally normal to work from eight in the morning till 10, half 10, 11 at night without stopping at all. Okay, that's a realistic. Yeah, thank that's you. not. I'm glad we brought it up to you, and I'm mm -hmm. glad you clarified that for mm -hmm. us. All right, Mark. Thank, thank, thank you. Thanks thank very you. much. Thank you. thank you. All my chefs work five days a week. I have to say nowadays. Yeah, true. We have got as bit much of a... as possible. Yes. I mean, I think the way that you lose staff is that they then have no work-life balance. Mm. I don't mind having someone for five days a week if he's working for longer hours. Coldeep has the experience, but does he have the style? Uh, one concern that I have got, Chef, is um, whether are you going to be able to come out of the mold of a fine dining restaurant or not. That's a very big concern for me. Well, I try my best. Yeah. I can. So it's not a problem. It's always, anywhere you go, you have to adapt the things. I can fit myself anywhere, actually. So it's not a problem for me. I'm doing this for 10 years. So it's not in just one country. Okay. Right, sir. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very, very much. much. Thank, Thank you, 
I feel so disappointed about this whole thing because we, we have really interviewed each of the chefs and given them a chance to ask us any questions that they thought were essential in their decision-making process as to whether they wanted to go forward. No one brought up salary, no one brought up hours. All of a sudden, it has reared its ugly head today. I'm really sorry because I've kept you waiting. So in terms of our expectations, I think, uh, I think there was a mismatch with uh, well, one particular chef. And I think uh, that chef who is going out today now is Arvinda. Okay. Thank you. I wish you all the best. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank you. We're really sorry. I like it. I've so enjoyed your food so Thank much. You so and much. I wish you luck in the future. No worries. I wish you best of luck for your business. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Best of luck. Ultimately, all our cards were thrown up in the air somewhat because Arbinder made it clear that actually his salary expectation was much higher than Jay and Otam were prepared to pay. I'm disappointed, uh, not on the cooking part. Uh, sadly, I'm not uh, fitting into their criteria of the business, uh, what they're looking for. It has given me a lot of uh, uh, motivation to learn more things in the future and to perform better in the kitchen where I'm working right now. Well, then you, mate. So, well done, both of you. Thank you. And so now on to the last part of this. I'm really looking forward to seeing more of your food and to seeing what responses their loyal customers have. Good luck to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. All the best. Thank you. If Mark and Kuldeep are to prove that they are the right head chef material for Jay and Atam's vision, they must now pull out all the stops and deliver the remainder of their three-course market cuisine menu. I'm not nervous. Nervousness is not in my book. I mean, even after they said in the first heats that you know it was to be more traditional and what they want, um, I've just kind of stuck to what I do in a way and put my twist on it. For Jay and Utam, finding the perfect head chef is all part of the bigger picture. It's come to a point where we want to really upscale and you know, grow uh, the restaurant into a sort of a chain. And that's in we need a head chef to come in and take us through. Throughout the week, Alex has advised Jay and Utam on how to make their restaurant chain dream a reality, starting with creating a signature style. I think that white as a colour should be banned in this restaurant. I want this to be contemporary, sexy Indian eating. To help add wow factor and establish a template for future restaurants, Alex sent along some expertise. What we're thinking is it's more about introducing colour and interest and texture into the restaurant. Using your cushions, I've selected lots of paint samples that we can try on the walls. If we're able to get it right, I think uh, it would make our restaurant take the next step, the next step forward, which we really want. Inspired by the new vision, Jay and Utam instantly began to transform their cold colour zone into a setting to reflect their ethos of Indian market cuisine. A few days back, we were scared about the colours. On this wall is, is what we call a pistachio green. It matches with our chairs. You know, the red and green, which are symbols of Indian spices and colours. Indian's marketplace is about madness. Exactly. It's about Whatever you feel, do it sort of a thing. Do it and yeah. uh, it, it'll go in the flow. Creating a signature style will not only establish a template for future restaurants, it will also send a strong message to the new head chef that this is a business with big ambitions. What Alex and Claire did is to take the fear away from our thought process. We wanted to play it safe, but the more I'm getting to see this, I feel just delighted. I think it's an amazing change. It was a bit bland, and mm -hmm. it's certainly not bland. Your food's not bland, so mm -hmm. it's a much better match to your yes, food. Yes. We are moving in that right direction towards yes. achieving it. The use of bold colours is yeah. certainly in the right direction. But what, what we need to do is to keep on moving in that direction, not to stop there. It makes it much more appealing for a new head chef because it's clear that he's coming somewhere where you are moving on with a project, where it now becomes evident that the next stages to your dream are that little bit closer. 
but that dream demands a head chef who can deliver on every element of the job. The ultimate head chef for us is going to be someone who's going to be leading by example, someone who would understand the concept, someone who's going to be, who's going to be customer focused, someone who's going to be bring about the best out of the team. And uh, this is an ultimate head chef that we're looking for. Will Mark and Kuldeep be able to live up to expectations as they prepare for their final challenge, cooking their remaining courses in a full service? Good evening, guys. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Kuldeep. Krishna. Krishna. Nice meeting you. They have 90 minutes to prepare their mains and desserts. Two junior members of the brigade will be on hand to work with them. Right, so I'm working with you two today. Oh, yeah. You're helping me out. That's yeah. fantastic. Great. I'm going to write your names down. In a highly charged yeah. kitchen, thorough briefing and supervision of the team are essential to the role of a good head chef. Slice the onion and brown it. Just golden brown, not colour it, OK? We've got power in the main course. We've got a coriander relish. Very simple. And then we've got the Alexander Bhaji. This is the Alexander. Bhaji, yeah. Rice flour. This is a wild English plant. Okay. Called Alexander. Okay. So we can start now, yeah? Yeah, we can start now. Yeah. Why don't Just, you, uh, why don't I assign you a job? Yeah. Okay. How's that sound? Chef Kuldeep? <coughs> yes. Uh, if you get time, can you just brief the team, the menu and what they're okay. making, so that at least they're aware okay. of the dishes that they're making? Yeah, this one we make, it Kundan Kaliya, okay? What was your impression of how the chefs were interacting with their teams downstairs? Mark is a, a step ahead, where he has properly briefed the team as to what is their plan, how they work, and what is their uh, process flow, so that in service time you don't have any sort of margin of error. But I would have loved if Kuldeep had done the entire briefing for the team and bring them all up to the sort of same speed. This is the moment where we really see what a chef is made of, what their character is like under pressure, um, how they lead a team, whether they lead by example or by threats. Just a little bit, yeah? Just a little bit. The chefs need to communicate with each other as well as with their teams. Is that better? Go the other way, other way, that way. Go that way. Open it that way. I really like Mark as a potential head chef for here. He's kind of very upfront. Lemon juice, nine yeah. tablespoons. Yeah. Yeah? So put the juice into, into something and then, then measure. He's clearly capable. He's very good at leading a team. Um, all of that very positive. Cool Deep is a really charming character. Yeah, that's perfect. He's got a lot of knowledge about Indian cooking. He's shown flashes of sheer genius. He's kind of gone from being a back runner to playing a very important part in this process. Two sheets together, take it out, put in dust. He doesn't seem like as much of a team leader as Mark does, but I'm, I'm prepared to be surprised. Mark will be cooking pohar rice with fried wild Alexander, hot coriander chutney, date sauce, and a paratha and mango salad. For dessert, he will serve kesri, a saffron semolina pudding with pistachios, cashews, and raisins. But does he have time to prepare? I push myself, and I've given myself probably a bit too much to do. Um, but uh, you know, if I've played it safe, where's the fun in that? For Kuldeep's main, he is making kundan kalir, a pan-seared lamb cannon with lamb samosa, artichoke pickle, and gravy. This will be followed by a yogurt-based dessert called bapa doi, made with rose and raspberry. I'm not nervous. I'm here to just cook good food. In the preparation of their menus, it's imperative our chefs take into consideration Jay's recommended costings. Going over budget will lose any chance of making a profit. So, let, just to be clear, mm -hmm. you would expect for a on a £25 set menu, the cost element of that, about £3.50 on a main course and about £1.50 for a dessert. Yes. Is that right? That's, That's about absolutely right. Right. About right. right. Yes. Mark's is about half the cost that you expect as on the main course at £1.52 okay. and still under on the dessert as well. I think he's trying to pitch his three course more towards the sort of lunch three course menu. But Kuldeep has again misjudged his costs having to adapt the ingredients of his £6.50 main dish. So we think that this will go down 
per portion to five pounds approximately, which That's is still right. rather too expensive for, for what we're expecting. Yeah. And his costing has been in the region of around 38, 39%, which is a bit worrying. But his figures aren't the only thing failing to add up. My, my worry is that none of the dishes that so far he has cooked, he has proved that he can cook market-style food. He has chosen a dish which is quite what we call Nawavi, which is posh for yes. the royals. But you never know, as I said, if he, if he is creating a dish which is absolutely a blinder, let's see, let's wait for it. Well, we've got a very interesting combination. We've got one chef who's doing the cheapest chips version, <laughs> and we've got one chef who's doing the rather absolutely. more expen too expensive version. So that, That's the beauty of cooking. What's that you doing there, Kuldi? I'm making British samosa. Yeah. British? I mean, it's yeah. originated in Indian restaurants in the UK. Yeah, man. Uh -huh. Just for you guys. For his lamb sauce, Kuldi first marinates his meat. Chili, salt, and ginger garlic paste, that's it. Very simple. Chef, you will not necessarily use the sort of prime cuts of meat for your this sauce, isn't it? In Lucknow, you would use mostly yeah. um, the sort of, you know, the tougher cuts of meat and then slowly braise for a long time. Yes. So you're using a sort of a decent kind of meat yeah. and then you will sort of roast it, slice it up and then pour the sauce on top. Is yeah. that the idea? Yeah, that's the idea. Oh, okay. I'm uh, very excited. Now, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to put like British magic. British magic. Yeah, butter. Um, butter. <laughs> 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 Hooray for butter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All the best. Thank you. How the chefs manage their brigade is an essential part of this interview process. Seven. You're not being serious, are you? You're not taking this seriously, are you? Yeah. Huh? <laughs> Mark's experience clearly shows with his confident instructions to his team. Mark? Date and tamale sauce is finished, so where are you going? Great. Put it yeah. with the coriander there, and then we know where it is. OK. And you're going to move on to the, um, do the raita now? Yeah. Yeah? Turn. So I can yeah. start? Well, actually, can you make the uh, dough first? OK, I can yeah. do Such that. detailed communication will be vital if Mark is to impress once again and pull off his ambitious menu. Just pull it like that. Take a few at a time. Okay. And it won't take so long. Okay. How are you doing? Hi. Doing good, I think. Yeah. Getting there. We've got the poa. Um, which is the flattened rice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I kind of think of it like a, it's almost like a, a, a kedgeri without the fish. So the whole idea of this dish was healthy lunch menu. That's healthy, where healthy light lunch, um, reasonably priced, help so, bring people in, put the bums on seats. We like fill bums the on seats. Ah, of course yeah, we, we do. We all like, fill, fill know, the all restaurant. Yeah. In the back. Yeah. So perfect for the occasion that he's catering to. All right, darling, thank, right. thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. All of us. Thanks. I think with Mark's dish, I'm particularly worried about his, uh, the uptake of moisture on the sort of flat and rice, but I really don't want that kedgeri texture in that pour. With uh, Kuldeep's dish, again, it's all about the lamb. If he overcooks the lamb, and it's because he's not cooking in the sauce, then it might be very dry. The restaurant doors are about to open for a select group of diners. Regular customers whose opinions will matter most. I'm longing to see how the chefs handle the pressures of service, how the dishes present, and how the customers like them. Hello there, good afternoon. Welcome to Berkeley. Hi. How are you? How are you? How are you? Hi. 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 Glad you made it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Silver Lee. But I'm dying to find out what the Alexander is. Before any orders can be taken, chefs must first brief the front of house team. OK, but I want to go first. Sure, Kuldeep. Clear instructions are key to a seamless service and how to sell a dish to the diner. So my first dish is main course. It's okay. going to be a kundan kaliya okay. with the lamb rump. And uh, how the lamb is well cooked, if customer asks about it? Rare to medium. Rare to but medium. you can ask the customer as well. Rare. OK. So, Mark, what are you giving to our customer today? We've got the power, okay. which is the flattened rice, yes. and the deep fried um, bhaji, which is this is an English wild herb. I mean, you need to taste it, guys, yeah, so, you can, so you can get the flavour. Um, sort of celery, parsley, perfumey flavour. Okay. It's ta it'll taste strong raw, but it won't taste so strong when it's cooked. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Okay. 
I'm worried about communication between the chefs. Yes. A service is rather like a ballet performance, you know, unless the corps de ballet have had a chance to do a hell of a lot of rehearsing, it can all be a disaster on the night. I'm hoping this ain't one of them. This must be their best performance, as everything now rides on the service. So we're going to have two and two. We're going to share them and taste them, tell you what we want. <laughs> one of each? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. To keep diners happy, both chefs must work together to produce their dishes at the same time. Good evening, chef. Yes, I've got uh, two orders now already, two tables. One is for four people, one table is for two people. With Kuldeep cooking his lamb to order, it will be up to him to take the lead. I'm relying on him to tell me when he wants it and then I'll go. Table for three is going two vegetable and one uh, lamb. One lamb. And the table for two is going one each, one vegetable and one lamb. So we're going to give both table together. Okay, no, I'm happy with that. Pass the board table together. Yeah, so two, yeah. three power, yeah? Yeah, yeah, fine. Okay. okay. Within the confines of a busy kitchen, clear communication is critical. Now I'm bringing my plates for my my plates. They are coming from upstairs, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Service. Where are they all? I need three. Where are they all? I've got a lot of main courses to dish up, yes, mate. Yes, yes. One plate is no good for me. Thank you. Service. OK, first table gone now. The second table is working, is it? Yeah, we go. Yes, thank you. What do you want? Next up, table three and the table two. Got to go together again. Oh, you are three. How are we doing time-wise? Come on, guys. We've got a table waiting. Yeah, go on his first table. Shall I read? Yeah. Which table number are we serving now? It is the usual confusion of two chefs, two commies each, not enough briefing, plates not in the right place. Chefs haven't asked for plates before they needed them, as if they miraculously appear. You know, the, the communication between kitchen and front of house is key to any successful restaurant. And I actually don't think either of those chefs communicated very well with their front of houses. To help restore order, it's all hands on deck. Do you want me to take this so that we don't have it sitting here? Please. Thank you. You now know what, what's happening. So let's make it smoother. Yeah. Now the front of house are better aware of what's happening. I expect that things will go a bit more smoothly. Table number two, two packs, mark, one portly and one kundan kaliya. Okay. One put kundan kaliya. Yes, sir. Three. Yeah, here is your portly kawa. Mm. 29 is done, 24 is done. These are the whole one. Perfect. 23 and 27. Perfect. Chefs have been asked to create a three-course menu based on the restaurant's ethos of Indian market cuisine. Alex, Jay and Uttam will be judging the dishes on being the right fit for the current menu, from presentation to spicing. Good. Hey, my darling. For Mark's main course, he's served poha rice with peas, pomegranate, fennel, and lemon. It's accompanied by fried wild Alexander, hot coriander chutney, date sauce, and a paratha and mango salad. Will Mark's lunch-inspired dish fulfill expectations? Look at the color and presentation. It's like a celebration, isn't it? That's been his trademark so far. I think that's what uh, oh, really amazing impresses me. The best part of, uh, I think, his is that taking that effort of making this chutney in house. Amazing. This is exactly how poha is. You know, my mother would cook poha at home. And the way he has layered his parathas is, uh, is quite unbelievable. And his, He's a uh, clever chef, isn't he? Mm. Yes. Kuldeep's main course is Kundan Kalir, a pan-seared lamb cannon with lamb samosa served with artichoke pickle, 
and Kundan Kalia gravy. But will the style be too fine a touch? What has, you know, he has achieved out of the sauce and the potatoes have been amazing. And also the samosa has been, the texture, the crunch, the, 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 the delicious thing. And I would happily have that for my mains, yeah. And I'm not too sure how many people will appreciate in this part of the world having silver foil. Many clients and uh, customers of ours, they were asking whether it is edible or not as well. So no, I think this is how we push boundaries because uh, silver foil is very much part of marketplace dining. And I think uh, uh, this is how we should educate and sort of what we have done is to sort of let them know and they are quite happy. So at the moment, at the moment, do you think they're neck and neck, the chefs? I think they are very evenly matched. With such an important decision to make, Jay and Atam will value the opinions of the people who matter most, their loyal, regular diners. The lamb was extraordinarily good. That was the highest um, excitement. I was expecting something a little bit more tame. In actual fact, it was, it was very different, very, very exciting. OK, chefs, desert orders are here. First table is table 27 for two people, one each for everyone. With everything to play for, will one of these desserts be enough to help decide who should be the new head chef? And here they come. Oh. Thank you, Thank you. For his dessert, Mark has prepared a kesri, a saffron semolina pudding with pistachio, cashews, and raisins. It's, it's a very traditional Indian dessert with a twist. And again, uh, and it works for me. I, I, I think it has got every everything right. Right from the crunchy almonds here and uh, to, to using a lot of, uh, you know, raisins and uh, cashew nuts. I think uh, with Mark, he has each and every stage, he has surprised me in some way or the other. Similar in texture to a creme caramel, Kuldeep's dessert is a rose and raspberry bapa doy. But will it be enough to sweeten the deal? I'm dying to try it, looking at your face. I think uh, what he has got is the texture right, and it's, it's based on yogurt. So. It's stunning. The dish oh can become gosh. very, very heavy. The, traditionally, the way it is made is very heavy. Oh. The way he has come up with this absolutely stunning. Darling, I'm not a dessert person, and I have to say that gets my 10 out of 10. True. I just as, love as that. I, yeah, this is one of the dishes which I will happily eat <laughs> <for everything. laughs> Greedy, but good. Cool, Dave. Well done, mate. It was good. Yeah, he tried too hard with the lamb. With the lamb. True. He tried too hard. Jay and Atam must now take all into consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Which finalist has demonstrated they have what it takes to be the new head chef? Very, very proud. What I've done, what I did, so everything is good. I'm very proud of my cooking today. I think that went quite well. I did give myself a lot of work to do, but hopefully um, it's, you know, the overriding flavours and, and everything will, will uh, make the customers happy. Four testing days of cooking and interviews from nine candidates now boil down to one final decision. This is a critical moment for your restaurant. I mean, I was just uh, adding up, you know, I was uh, marking them out of, uh, out of 10. In terms of the scores, I mean, they are pretty much uh, neck and neck. I mean, there's not much to differentiate with what, in terms of the actual skill level. What are you gonna do, eh? Well, really, we need to put a thoughts together because there was so much things happening we need to just take five minutes and think about it properly. Yeah, I think. I think so. Okay. I'm just very confused about what they should do here. I mean, I don't know what I would do in their position.
Good points about Mark. Uh, he's clearly an incredibly able chef. He's very good at leading a team. He can turn his hand to pretty much anything. Cool Deep has a good knowledge of Indian cooking, and I think his dessert is the one standout dish for me today. But I'm not convinced necessarily of his leadership abilities. I think it's really open-ended at the moment. You know, I'm glad I don't have to make the decision. So have you made up your mind, Jay? I think on the on balance, if you look at his skill, his uh, his expectations, and his attitude and his experience, I think so. I, I'm thinking the same line. So. Chefs. Hi. Good evening. Thank you very much for being so patient. I'll leave it to you two. Both of you chefs are sort of deserved winners in their own right. We had the diners feedback in, we had our thoughts in, and also we had the team's feedback in with whom you worked. So taking everything into account, we have come to a decision. It has really gone down to the wire, and, and for us, it was not at all an easy job. So the person who's going to be employed as a head chef at Portly is... Deep. Fantastic. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Thank well you. Done. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Thank you. Brilliant. Cool Deep. He's a he's a talented chef. Jay and Adam have definitely made the right decision. Um, for me, from here, um, I, I hopefully will just will carry on where I am. I've enjoyed it immensely. Sometimes second chance in life probably change, change somebody's life, and I think uh, today it has again been proven. Yeah. And then Chef Kuldeep, I can't really wait to work with you as you know. Yes. As in, it is going to be a fantastic journey together. I can assure you that. Yes, I am very proud of myself. I'm really happy. I'm looking forward to my new life. So very exciting. Actually, I think they made a good decision. I hope Kuldeep is as happy as he deserves to be and that it allows Jan and Tam to take great strides in the direction they want to go. It was a tough decision, to be very honest. To leave our personal thoughts, you know, on the side, and that was the best course of action for our company. We found the head chef, so yeah, it's all, all good news.